Dr. Pammi Seshar Srinivas conducted many awareness workshop sessions on job stress management and wellness enhancement. Working professionals across India, Israel, Mexico and US. Yoga training sessions for young athletes for high performance sport. PhD in yoga. Please welcome sir. Thank you uh, Jayanti madam and uh, thanks to all of you and a lot of good energy is the best way to celebrate uh, uh, independence day. Uh, thank you madam um, for initiating this. Today I'm going to talk about uh, cognitive health and yoga in awareness session right on this 75th day independence uh, day for india for our country along with all of you along with the monash institute of yoga participants and uh, just wanted to take you directly into the topic right what is a cognitive function at a glance right we spoke about uh, uh, hypertension we spoke of diabetes we spoke about a lot of uh, other uh, uh, diseases which are uh, which is diabetes and you know which are really killers now but i think we also need to start worrying about our cognitive function so what is a cognitive function is it relates to the mental process many people have many definitions and uh, by and large we can think like a brain health it refers to the mental processes involving acquiring knowledge right and also for any knowledge we get, how we kind of perceive it, how we manipulate that information, and how we actually reason it. So that is predominantly the mental process of it where cognitive function is involved. So cognitive function includes domains of perception, memory, learning, attention, and language capabilities. And uh, if you see the mind processes, uh, at, a, at a thought process, thought level, and the a kind of bottoms of process of, you know, the sensory functions, then they actually meet at the cognitive function. So that is a cognitive function at a glance. And uh, how it actually kind of comes to our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life, right? Why cognitive health is very important for us, right? It is, uh, it is not easy. It's not directly kind of, you know, I'm at an accident. So, you know, kind of my hand or... Uh, you know, leg is kind of uh, injured, right? Likewise, it is visible, some of this. Or, you know, uh, kind of if, if somebody has some health parameters with a blood test, it can be is visible. Right? But if cognitive health, right, it actually plays a role in sensory functions like sense and response, motor functions, how we actually control and move our motor organs, our emotion function, right? Wherever this, this cognition, the reasoning um, is, is necessary, that is where the cognitive health plays a role. And emotional function also cognitive uh, function plays a big role. And higher order function, like, you know, especially if you are thinking about the, you know, kind of not uh, uh, labor, day-to-day uh, uh, -day labor jobs, but, you know, you want to think about the, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, jobs in terms of uh, making uh, leadership decisions, making uh, any uh, uh, risk, risk analysis, which are the higher order functions, clearly think, learn, and reason then also cognitive health plays a key role. And executive functions, especially I saw a lot of aspirants and some of you uh, uh, are kind of PhD uh, 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 and also uh, research students. I'm very happy to see that. Thanks to uh, Jayanti Madam and all for this wonderful work, right, to bring the scientific aspect to yoga. So you really need to use the executive function in terms of hey, doing the research is all about kind of setting the right uh, goal hypothesis and also kind of uh, planning how you uh, plan your judgment in terms of what kind of qualitative and quantitative else we do. So that happens for research students. But similarly, uh, you know, even if somebody is uh, executing an IT job or any other or a doctor doing, you know, uh, a patient uh, uh, treating the patient, right? Anything or a business person doing their job, right? So executive function also very important. So by and large, cognitive function, cognitive health plays a key role in everything, almost everything we do, including our emotions as well as, you know, day-to-day -day functions and uh, high-level functions like uh, goal setting, planning and judgment. And cognitive health prepares us better to better handle unexpected events. It could be very simple. For example, you know, while we are driving on the road and unexpectedly somebody, some two-wheeler cut us, uh, you know, from the front and the back or whatever, right? So at that moment, how we actually kind of uh, make a decision at that time, that potentially can save us from an accident or creating an accident to others. So 
so that, that's the importance of cognitive health and it is gaining uh, popularity day by day in uh, you know kind of medical terms also so it is important now we understand that you know cog maintain cognitive health is very important for all of us right across all age groups so what are the risk factors for the cognitive health the cognitive health can be impaired impaired means like in our ability to you know kind of use our sense organs or motor organs our ability to think kind of reason language capabilities right the cognitive health is impaired by the environmental factors the toxic foods we are taking and the polluted air we are breathing and the polluted water we are doing uh, or drinking right that is actually impacting our cognitive health as well lifestyle risk factors sedentary lifestyle and you know uh, today if you go to an at job and you know uh, or many jobs for that matter uh, the celebration is always in, includes uh, you know abuse of abuse of substance and abuse of uh, you know kind of uh, uh, the body right that is considered a celebration unfortunately so these are the lifestyle risk factors uh, these factors also kind of uh, 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 create a negative impact on the cognitive health and it also comes from the genetic age uh, gen genetics and age as well and apart from that it is also improper and excessive use of medicine also risks our cognitive health and uh, accidents and uh, uh, any any accidents which are uh, impact which are impacting our uh, brain or, you know head injuries and all they also kind of uh, create a negative impact on the cognitive health and what happens if cognitive health is not taken care right what happens is cognitive decline uh, and you know our ability to remember things our ability to re uh, reason out things right that will come to um, um that will decline uh, you might have heard dementia and the alzheimer's diseases it is slowly gaining number of people uh, getting affected by that is also increasing it's not really after 60 years but also people you know uh, late 40s are also started getting uh, impacted by this and uh, also, the other thing is like existing health conditions like diabetes, heart diseases, depression, these actually will have a negative impact on the cognitive health. So if we do not have good cognitive health, brain good brain health in short, then it can in turn increase our diabetes and uh, heart diseases or coronary diseases and depression. And if this, this diabetes and heart, they have a negative impact. It's like a, um, uh, both affect each other negatively. So, and that's one thing. Now, you may know that neuroplasticity, uh, your old doctors, you may, um, uh, some of your doctors, you may understand the neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is basically brain is very intelligent. In fact, certain part portions of the brain is impacted, then it will find alternative ways to execute the same function, right? So that is called, uh, that's, that's basically called neuroplasticity. So if we have a good cognitive reserve, it helps us to stave off the symptoms of degenerative brain diseases and increase resilience. So like the way we are putting our in bank, you know, for future, uh, you know, we are earning today for us and for family and also, you know, for difficult times, right? We want to take the money from the bank and get the livelihood going. So we can also, uh, we also have a cog one is cognitive health and there is cognitive reserves, right? These cognitive reserves, we can actually increase. If the cognitive reserves are there, then even the normal regular brain function is actually affected, right? It will actually can create an alternate path. So we all need to work towards, um, you know, at all age groups now, unfortunately, right? Not only, you know, 60 plus or 50 plus kind of uh, age group, but across uh, almost 20 plus uh, people have to work for the greater cognitive uh, reserves uh, to stave off the uh, symptoms of dege degenerative brain changes and increase the resilience. Now, the question is, do we really need to worry about cognitive? Seriously, are you serious? Do we really need to worry about it? Right. I understand, uh, you know, kind of diabetes. Yeah, sure. It was, you know, earlier it was, if I'm not 50, then I will worry about uh, cognitive. I need not worry about diabetes, right? If I'm not 50. But today, even at the age of 30, people are doing the tests and, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, symptoms of pre diabetic condition. And everybody is uh, kind of so worried. I understand that. But do we really need to worry about cognitive health? Yes, we do need to worry about it. Currently, um, as far as the uh, uh, data we have, that by, as of 2019, 1.3 trillion US dollars money is spent on cognitive health care. Means not only the people who are affected, but the care associated with them. 1.3 trillion dollars, and it is going to go to 1.2.8 trillion dollars by 2030. And so it means that the cognitive functions and you know kind of Alzheimer's diseases and, and, and dementia is only going to increase. 
and uh, I don't know, somebody told uh, when in the, in the in the presentations our lifespan is increasing but you know is it increasing really uh, in a good way in the sense that you know if the average is is earlier as about 50 years now it's about 60 plus years now but as per the world health organization what happened is across demographics across the continents even the is uh, average lifespan increased the quality of life and good health did not increase it re- it means that really people who are living longer right they're only living longer worrying about their health okay so it really means that you know we need to really there's not really much use honestly right for example if i'm living 60 years or 70 years now uh, average average but you know come 19 uh, uh, i don't know uh, 1930 it may be like 40 years right if i had a 10 years of uh, quality of life now also i have got 10 years of quality of life across demographics across africa united states india germany so called developed countries and developed countries also so people are living longer and uh, currently this uh, the people who are aged more than 60 years is about 1.1 about about uh, close to 1 billion people across all continents and 60% of uh, that are living in the low and middle income uh, uh, countries and by 2050 about 2.4 trillion uh, 2.4 uh, yeah 2.4 billion people are going to be aged more than 60 means that you know cognitive health has to be taken seriously starting now to increase so now can yoga help us to up the cognitive health so we all know right uh, from patanjali yoga sutra right uh, what is uh, yoga yoga is all about yoga chitta vritti nirodaha and uh, and if you took chitta vritti it is mind processes pramana vipariya vikalpa nidra smutya the mind mind processes are predominantly lie in the state of acquiring the right knowledge pramana vipariya false knowledge verbal delusion sleep and laziness our memory so we are in one of these five states all the all the time right this is beautifully explained by patanjali right in the in a patanjali yoga sutra in the in the first chapter sixth sloka you see here a person here a picture here the person is surfing and you can see that the 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 kind of the tide is about to kind of take him in but by the time tide comes in this person has to surf it cut it and move forward means that we are also kind of in the mind processes before mind processes take us we need to cut them with the balance and move forward if we are actually attached to uh, you know what i'm telling is right this is the right knowledge then again we are becoming affected by the mind process similarly like anything so so we need to find a balance in all this mind process and that is verily yoga if we can find a balance on all our mind processes and that is uh, is very yoga which will slowly take us to the Savija samadhi nirbija samadhi and all stages of ashtanga yoga right so and if we can maintain and we heard in hypertension in diabetes we just with statistical data right it is actually helping us um uh, yoga yoga practices of pranayama uh, asanas and dhyana are helping us to be very balanced and to maintain our homeostasis uh, and a balance between parasympathetic and uh, um, sympathetic nervous system. So cognitive health also will uh, be improved if we regularly do yoga sadhana. Yoga sadhana of you know a combination of <coughs> uh, asanas, pranayama, and uh, dhyana. Just so, what are the asanas that will help? Um, so asanas that will help the emotional balance. Asanas that help musculoskeletal coordination, asanas that help central nervous system for both sympathetic and nervous, uh, uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic, right? Both the stimulating and relaxed. Which is, so we we understand that you know every time we do stiram sukham asanam, and then we have to kind of give a relaxing pose after every uh, uh, set of uh, stimulating poses. So when once we do all that, then we actually kind of uh, increasing our cognitive uh, resource. I just want to tell you that you know kind of uh, at a basic level these are the asanas that can be employed for increasing the uh, cognitive health you can see that here it is the ajrasana is for the balance bhujangasana for the abdomen health and adamukha svanasana is also called for the musculoskeletal uh, coordination balasana is predominantly you know kind of relaxing and padmasana and you know kind of uh, maintaining that uh, calmness in the breath so just want to tell you whether really is it cognitive health and yoga is it finding scientific is is, is there any clinical evidence uh, that is helping our cognitive health a lot of research studies happening 
and uh, it is it is found that you now uh, with six months of yoga practice as an intervention uh, it indicated that yoga practice results in improvement of memory performance and psychophysiological uh, parameters compared to conventional physical exercises so about about in the brazilian brazilian army they did a study with this published in international journal of cognition and they found that you know in a control group and an experimental group they found that to one group right uh, to the experiment group they gave the yoga as an intervention in the control group regular army exercises and then they found that you know the memory performance and the uh, psycho physiological parameters are good in the yoga group similarly similarly using clinical control experiments like predominantly this is on the cognitive health right cerebral blood oxygen content and brain feedback based test by using that it was found that yoga exercise therapy has a significant positive effect on improving cognitive ability motor function and nerve excitability in stroke patients so again coming back to the basic level of asanas and uh, included with pranayama right it can actually help the cognitive health uh, you know of the stroke patients also so and results suggest that uh, yoga may have beneficial effects on cognitive function attention and verbal memory improved sleep mood neural connectivity for persons with a mild mild cognitive impairment people now you will be hearing that you know cognitive impairment is going to if we we are going to hear more and more as one of the diseases going forward next 3 4 5 years for sure even in the uh, you know less age group also so definitely apart from hypertension diabetes this cognitive health also has to gain a, a proper place uh, where yoga can help uh, uh, help it and more robust findings are work in progress i think that's all i have um, uh, at this point of time